Let's have a look at this skeletal mesh here. You can see if I hit the play button now, there's an animation playing. But I want to add some functionalities to that, similar to the TV example where I look at it and it starts or stops playing. But I want to introduce a new concept here. So let's see what we can do with this. This already is a blueprint. If we open this up and it's also right in our blueprint folder. So let's have a look. And the first thing we want to change is that the mesh is not actually playing the animation. So let's reset this here and say we want to use an animation blueprint because we want to be responsible for triggering this animation. And let's actually let's open up this skeletal mesh. First, because there's one thing I wanted to show you. You can also use this reduction setting for uh, skeletal meshes. You find it here if you open up your skeletal mesh here and scroll down to reduction settings. There's also the possibility to reduce it. For example, let's do it um, point, point 0.2 or something like this and regenerate it. Now we went from 80,000 to 16,000 triangles. It's still very high. We can maybe go even lower, 0.1, so it's 10% and regenerate it. Okay, now we have 8,000. So this is good to go. Just, just a quick tip here. So let's save it up and go back to our actual blueprint. And what I want to have is a gaze view component. So let's add one right here. The component gaze view. And in this case, um, I want to modify it a little bit from the TV example. So now let's use the trigger with progress. And the trigger with progress, once it's full, it will toggle the component trigger. So we would also need to add a component trigger in there. And for the component trigger, there are different possibilities we can use here. In this case, we want to activate something. So let's add the activate here and open up the actual blueprint. What we want to use here is the interface active. So let's add a new interface here and it's called active and compile. We have this active here, so this trigger will trigger the active interface. And in the active interface, we have this toggle functionality. The other ones we don't need here, so we can just remove it. And what we are going to do is we want to see if the animation is playing, but not from the base, of course, but from the skeletal mesh here. So we want to see if this is playing. And if it's playing, we want to stop the animation. And if it's not playing, we want to play the animation. So let's type in play animation. And the animation to play is this cradle loop. And this should be everything we need to do here. So let's try it out. So now when I look over the mesh, you can see it starts playing. And if I look over it again, you can see that it, well, it, it already stopped. So there are some things we need to change. First of all, we want to loop the animation. Let's see if this is working. So it's working, it's playing fine now. And if I look over it again, you can see now it stops.
Also, you may recognize this is only working right now if I hover over the actual static mesh here from the base. And the trigger is very small. If we want to increase it, that it's easier to trigger it on the quest, we can add a box component. So, add a new box collision here, size it down a little bit, something like this. And we want to use a custom collision set. We want to block the visibility and the camera here. And now this box is it's not visible to us, but if I hover over it, you can see it's working now. Okay, this was actually everything we have to do in order to toggle the animation of the mesh. So now we have basically talked about everything. We had our skeletal mesh here, we had animations in there, we talked about all the optimizations um, you have to do. We integrated a TV with a movie file and I showed you how you can copy it over to the quest in the project settings. We have created a light where you can actually turn it on and off so it's fully dynamic. We have also created the exchange component that we are able to exchange the mesh with another one and we can open up this drawer and close it. We can change the materials of the floor, of the pillow, of the couch itself. So I'm going to go back in and rework some of the meshes and some of the lighting for the next tutorial. I'm also going to bake the lighting again and I'm yeah, showing you what I have so far. So I see you in the next tutorial.